We are live. Welcome, everyone. Come on in. Nice to see you. Welcome to all of those that are participating in Zoom. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube and Facebook, hello to you as well. People are in the Zoom room turning on their cameras and saying hello just as we settle in here. Feel free to write in the chat as well for those in the Zoom room with us. Hi. Welcome, welcome. So before we Some start. Hello's coming in. <laughs> Sorry, I just need to get everything ready. Okay. Okay. Let's admit a few more people into the Zoom room. All right, so we are going to start recording here soon. Spell it. There's so many things that happen right exactly at 5.30, like at the same second, and Faison has to manage his three screens and all right. get it all on. Should we go ahead and start recording? Let's get going, yeah. All right. We are live and recording. Um, welcome to Monday Musings. Um, today is, what is it, January 15th? My goodness, we're all the way, already halfway through January 2024. 2024. Um, my name is Faison Sabzeli. I believe we didn't introduce ourselves last week, I think. I don't know. Uh, my name is Faison Sabzeli. I'm a life and relationship coach at uh, Dragonfly Wellness Center. Um, and this is... And I'm Dr. Syra, and I am the clinical director at Dragonfly Wellness Center. And I can actually say that now because when we first opened the business years ago i just put clinical director but i was the clinical director of myself <laughs> it's like i had the title but i wasn't doing the work and so now i'm actually doing the work and we have practitioners and therapists and we have courses and so i'm actually directing things now um and my training is in transpersonal psychology for those who might not know what that is it's kind of the meeting point between psychology and spirituality yeah. so while we talk about and even here in monday musings we bring in that spiritual element um into the work that we do around personal growth and development yeah and we've said before don't take our word for it so anything that you hear that doesn't really fit for you or you don't agree with it or it just rubs you the wrong way just throw it in the garbage so well just ignore you, it. you know we, we did want to clear up something because we got some um some feedback over mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks on certain on on a few things um but the purpose of this particular way of doing it is uh we sire and i use continue having conversations sometimes like when we're uh walking uh uh you know walking the dog or whatever we're doing uh we we have these conversations and we used to have these conversations before like we'd just be sitting on a couch and we're like you know we should record these conversations maybe somebody else can benefit from it that's Possibly. how our podcast started, yeah right? our, our way of thinking at least so this is kind of a live podcast and Syra obviously has training. She's got letters after her names. Um, she's gone to gone through school. I've also done some training, right? I've gone through a different set of trainings, uh, obviously for like uh, life coaching, which was in change theory model. Uh, I've done a lot of personal development workshops. But the idea of this particular way of doing it, the um, the conversations that we have is to let you into our way of thinking mm -hmm. how we're trying to implement it right like and i think we've mentioned this before is that a lot of us kind of have uh have knowledge mm -hmm. uh, have knowledge of theory uh but trying to actually make it work make it um make it practical that's what the idea of us right that's why we sometimes call ourselves out uh we um you know, we make fun. Well, we give our uh, own examples. Yeah, I, I make fun of Syra uh, for whatever. You know, uh, I, she's too nice and kind to uh, to pick on me too much. So, <laughs> so, but but we do that because this is how we how we talk, how we uh, communicate, and how we try to actually say right, like call each other out, but also try to make it practical with some compassion for ourselves and and fun, right? Yeah. One of the things that I've 
noticed is that sometimes this personal growth work can get really heavy yeah and um and counseling one-on-one therapy is not an easy thing to do for those who are seeing a therapist you know what i mean right yeah and so this is a place where we can kind of lighten it up a little bit and enjoy the journey Mm. together and that means some laughter and that means some jokes and that means some so it's not meant to be like a webinar where you're learning a concept it's like peeking in on a mm-hmm. conversation yeah and we do share concepts obviously but but the idea isn't for um to uh to sh- to showcase how uh knowledgeable Syra is <laughs> no because she is uh <laughs> it's definitely not to showcase how knowledgeable i am um uh, <laughs> but it's, it's to showcase how to make this practic- practical right how do we live this forward? Mm-hmm. And so, so hopefully, uh, when you're watching this, you're watching it with that, um, th- those set of glasses with us, is you're kind of joining in, hopefully, in our conversation and finding ways to make it about you and how to implement it in your life. Mm-hmm. And that's where Sarah was mentioning earlier if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't align with your value, what I'm saying. Um, or what if, I'm saying. Yeah, if you don't like one of the messengers, it's okay. <laughs> it, it's all good. Uh, see where you can find value. And if there's no value, it's okay. Maybe next time there will be. Uh, but it's to find that like, oh, yeah, that's that's another way of looking at things. I think that's, uh, you know, I, I was meeting with somebody today. I had a, a good discussion. And one of the things was like, oh, that's an interesting way of, like how he repeated back something, but in his own way mm-hmm. uh, that I had stated. I'm like, whoa. That's even more powerful. Like that actually makes it more um, uh, more solid for me mm-hmm. to believe, like to, to be to hear it back in the way this person repeated something. So I think again, take it, make it your own, and that's let's. About, that's about it for that. Um, so can I give my announcement? You have announcements. I have announcement. You didn't tell me you had announcements. All right, go for it. Well, I just decided yesterday. You did. So it's new. It's very, it's off the press, hot off the press. So I, as you know, um, which story do I tell you? So many stories. Okay. To keep it really simple, in a couple of weeks, I'm running um, a live three hour interactive workshop online for therapists. Um, teaching them about how to work with South Asian clients. So looking at particular tools and techniques that are designed for South Asian clients and helping people understand like what's different, you know, why the standard training that we all get, why doesn't that work for every community? And so I'm going to be going into a deep dive with that with therapists in a couple of weeks. Before that, next week on Wednesday morning, uh, Vancouver time and afternoon Toronto time, I'm going to be doing kind of a a mini workshop, so about 45 minutes, and I'm just doing a deep dive into one particular tool that mm-hmm. I'm going to be um, teaching therapists around family uh, family composition in South Asian cultures versus other communities. And that, is, I mean, it's for therapists as well, but if that's a topic that interests you, you could come to the, it's free, and it's 45 minutes over the lunch hour in Toronto. Um, and if you wanted to learn a little, you know, get a little sneak peek into um, this particular topic, like I said, it's designed for therapists, but people who are interested in personal growth, anybody on our group, um, you're welcome to join us. So I will be ready with that, I think, tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And it should come out in the newsletter this Friday if you want to register for that. So just, I'm inviting you. You're not really part of the people who I'm talking to, but I think you'll enjoy it if you're someone who's just interested in, in family dynamics and particularly in the South Asian context. And if you have therapists in your context, Pass mm-hmm. it along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pass it along. Pass it along. So, okay, that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, and the other, the other exciting. acknowledgement I want to make is one of our dear friends and mentors um, is uh, kind of on his way to the other side, kind of passing over um, soon, and so we we have him in our hearts tonight and tomorrow. Um, and I think we've uh, we've spoken about him. I think a couple of times. Uh, his name is Kelly Toby. And um, Syrah um, got introduced to this, you know, this work that we uh, that we talk about. Uh, 
she got introduced because of another family member mm -hmm. who introduced you to Kelly Toby's work. Right. And Kelly kind of pulled you in into this world. And mentored me. And right? mentored you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't obviously have as many interactions with Kelly as you did. But I remember this one workshop that I was, uh, I attended with him uh, in Edmonton. And I was uh, one of the one of the processes, one of the exercises. I was having a really hard time moving, moving forward. Mm -hmm. And there were like people kind of behind me, encouraging me to move, like being okay to move. And um, for some reason, I couldn't. And then I saw him kind of standing on the opposite side of the room. I, he probably doesn't even remember, but like I just saw his face smiling, like you got this. like nothing else, right? Like and that. I remember just opened something in me, like I fell to my knees, and uh, yeah, it moved. Uh, it moved something in me, and uh, I was able to kind of take that step. And I'll be grateful to him for helping me process that. What I was where I was stuck. So thanks to Kelly. I know he's gonna. He's not gonna hear this, but hey. Ah, didn't expect to be crying today, but we're crying. It's hard, right? Letting go of people you love is just so hard, and we've had to do it a lot in mm. the last. And and people here on this call too. We've just been through so much, and it's so bittersweet, right? So bittersweet. So um, someone's saying the practical applications and examples are what I love most about these mm. sessions. Uh, someone else is saying thanks for thinking of us. Uh, thank you, Sarah. That's so generous of you to offer this workshop to us lay people too. Um, yeah, and so join us. Mm -hmm. So ha shout out to Kelly. Let's dive into our, our topic for today. Yeah. Yeah. And while you're clear, um, clear your oh my. moisture. <laughs> All the tears, the tears. Hopefully you didn't have to record any more videos after this oh, because I think I do. You, you're going to have to redo your makeup. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, Kelly. Okay. Um, so to, uh, we're, today's focus around relationship was around the attachment styles. Mm -hmm. um, so those, those of you who follow us on YouTube, somewhere here, Dragonfly Wellness TV, uh, go ahead and subscribe. We're looking to get to 500 subscribers. That's our next big goal. Yeah. Uh, we're at 390 something. Uh, anyways, go, go ahead, like the videos, whatever it might pass be. Pass them on to yeah, people. Yeah, pass them on. Um, but in that, in the last video that you released, uh, it was around uh, attachment styles. Mm -hmm. You kind of we we talked about the secure attachment, anxious attachment. And we've done that here in my have, music. Yeah. So this might be familiar for some of the people yeah. that have been coming regularly. This might be like, oh yeah, this yeah. sounds familiar. And so one of the things, I mean, we can, we'll, we'll share our screen in a bit here to kind of show the graphic that was also in the video. But I, I have some questions around um, around how we navigate, right? How do we, uh, why, why is it important, I guess, in a relationship to get to secure attachment? Yeah. Are you yeah. asking me right now? Yeah. So let me let me share the let me share the screen. If you can kind of do a quick overview sure. of the the different type of attachments, mm -hmm. and then we can um, yeah we can kind of go back. Ooh, fake to black. That's the wrong one. Okay. <laughs> that's that's the one. That's really great. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is actually a combination of two different models, this particular visual here. So we have the attachment theory, which was developed by John Bowlby. Um, and it's also combined with, um, called the model of self and others by Simpson Rhodes and Nelligan. I'm not that familiar with this. Is this, was this connected to your mm -hmm. training as yeah. like coaching? Something. Right? Yeah. 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 So this particular way of looking at it is is a combination of two different theories. So mm -hmm. let's start in the top left corner here, and that is secure attachment. So secure attachment is where, okay, back up. What is attachment? So attachment is, it's about bonding. So it's about how we bonded with our early caregivers, and then how that translates as we grow into our adulthood. 
Okay, so we had a particular style and, and you might not know how you bonded with your early caregivers, like you might not remember that, but you'll know how you bond with adults, how you connect, especially with your romantic partner. That's where it really shows up for people. But it can also show up in friendship. It can also show up in um, relationships with your teachers or your mentors or your colleagues, your bosses, whoever. You can be attached in different ways to different people. Mm -hmm. So I might have an anxious attachment style with my husband, but I might have an avoidant attachment style with a family member, a, you know, another family member. And that's really normal. So I'm going to take you through these four and see. So it's not about figuring out your attachment style because you'll have different styles and different relationships. But in general, in the most closest relationships to your heart, that's going to give you a clue as to which one is the most, um, that influences you the most, which attachment style. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Because sometimes we say, oh, like, I'm this kind of attachment, I'm that. But most of us go through the different ones at some point. Mm -hmm. So top left hand, that is secure attachment. That's what we're all striving for, where we have a positive view of ourselves and also a positive view of others. And so we're trusting, right? There's this emotional maturity where we're cooperative, we're flexible, um, we're able to communicate our needs, right? So we're not just toughing it out, we're actually able to receive as well as to give. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're not needy um, and we're not, you know, um, cold. We're just, we're just present with our loved ones. Mm -hmm. So that's secure attachment. When things go wrong, one of the other three attachment styles can show up. So secure attachment is the ideal, and there might be people in your life that you have secure attachment with. You're like, yeah, we can talk um, easily. We share what we need. It's not a, you know, we don't go flying into like um, judgment or disappointment or it's just kind of easy, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody who's just kind of easy to get along with and you feel like you can be your best self around them and you're not like worried that they're going to leave you and you're not like wishing they'd spend more time with you. That's a securely attached relationship, okay? Then there's the other three. Now, mostly in the research, or not in the research, but in the literature, like the pop psychology stuff, they mostly talk about anxious and avoidant attachment styles. Those are the ones that are the most um, explored because the fearful or disorganized attachment style is like there's a... You have a lot of steps to take when you're there, mm -hmm. right? And so most of us will find ourselves in anxious or avoidant. Now, what I love about this particular image is it tells you about how you interact with yourself and others. Mm -hmm. So if you think an anxious person who has an intense, anxious attachment style sees other people in a positive way, but sees themselves in a negative way, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like kind of like you're looking up at people and you're like, oh, I wish I could. I wish I could be closer. I wish I could. You, you get hurt. Your feelings get hurt easily. Um, there's this codependence. You rely on the other person. And sometimes you can be a bit unpredictable because anxious people who are anxiously attached often don't articulate their needs and they build and build and build and build and build. And then there's this huge, I mean, avoidant too, I guess, a little bit. There's mm -hmm. that. But the anxious... Um, the anxiously attached person will be very aware of their needs, but not able to speak them often. Right. right. So they need something, but they can't. It's hard to ask. Very, very hard to ask. Whereas the avoidant person, person with an avoidant attachment style, doesn't even really feel like they need anything. So they're often disconnected from their needs. Mm -hmm. They've figured out how to look after their own needs. So they're not as, as um, clinging to anybody around them. Well, and there's a distrust of others, right? Right. With an avoidant one, avoidant person, uh, they trust themselves right. a lot more than they trust the world. Self-reliance. Right? Yeah. So, it, it, you know, I think you, you, you may have heard us uh, talk about, right, like, do I believe the world to be a safe place or a dangerous place? Mm -hmm. Right? So for... Friendly. Uh, or friendly place or, or an unfriendly, uh, unfriendly place. place. Um, you know, I, I like the... Mm -hmm. uh, the, the dramatic language. Dramatic language. language. Since when? Uh, I'm rubbing since, off. Yeah, since you've rubbed off on me. Um, we, um, the, the avoidant person uh, sees the world as unfriendly. Mm -hmm. And so it says, I'd rather not deal with mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, the anxious person actually sees the world as a friendly place, 
just sees that they are they don't belong in it. Right. Right. Like they. I don't deserve it. Yeah. Or I don't know how to fit here. Yeah. Or I'm not the right. But match. they're but they want to be part of it, so then they cling to it, right? Right. And the avoidance like avoids <laughs> <laughs> avoids the world, uh, and I think that that's where it becomes uh, n- neither is neither is healthy, right. right? I think that that's one of the things is that there are challenges to either one, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? So. Um, so, and, and the yeah, fearful is kind of a combination, right? Fearful is also called disorganized attachment, which means you kind of flip flop between avoidant and anxious. You're much less predictable, and sometimes you're super, super clingy, and sometimes you're very, very cold. So it's just like we never know in in a given relationship. You never so in most relationships, it's it's pretty obvious who has the anxious and who has the avoidant style. Mm-hmm. Um, with fearful attachment. Um, it, it was born out of very, very unpredictable um, availability of our parents. And so then you kind of, dis- this is the way that children cope is that they just don't lock into any one way of being. They're able to switch back and forth depending on what their environment needs. That's how we develop uh, fearful attachment style. Um, somebody's asking about the other seminar. Um, it's... So the seminar that's coming up, the 45-minute quick mini workshop, is next Wednesday, January 24th, Wednesday, January 24th, at noon Eastern. So 12 o'clock Eastern time for 45 minutes, and it's a mini workshop for therapists and everybody on this call. Um, And you can invite others. So if there's other people you know who are interested in, you know, kind of the family dynamics in the South Asian context, and they want kind of a tool around that, I think it'd be really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. So, the, are you? Ooh, here's are a good yeah, question. That, well, that this this actually opens up the conversation I wanted to have. Mm-hmm. Was this person asking right? Like, I believe my primary attachment style is avoidant. However, I see the world in a positive light. Can you be a combination of two styles? Well, so the remember these are two models put on top of each other, right? So there's the model of the worldviews and then the model of attachment styles, and they've kind of put them on top of each other. Um, in this particular model, it looks like you, c- not really, right? It looks like that you, you're you either avoidant. So, okay, it's not to say that you have a positive or negative worldview. It's a view of others. View so of can, other, can you trust others? Are they there for you? Do they show up for you? Um, do you believe in them? Do you ask them for things? So it's not really about the Yeah, world, so I think right? sometimes we, we think of negative view meaning like we we hate <laughs> or right. we uh or we we rather distress. not deal with them. Right. But sometimes a negative view is uh, it's very uh, it's subtle. subtle. Yeah. It, in a sense that people will let me down. Yeah. You can't really count on people. That I I rather not ask anybody. Mhm. I can do this. I can I, do this on my own. I should be able to do this on my own. Like sometimes the shoulds catch up but it's like it, and it's there, there is this belief system that either they will let me down or I don't deserve their help mm-hmm. and I need to do this on my own. Mm-hmm. So I rather avoid that situation altogether. I rather run away from relationship. I, I'm in a relationship, but I rather keep it at a, you know, like arm's, a, length. Like arm's length. Right. Yeah. So if someone says, I think it varies on how people show up. If they are consistent, then I'm able to trust. However, if they're inconsistent, I'm a little more conscious. And so here's the thing. As you do your work, right, as you kind of clear the path and let go of the past and, you know, be mindful about what you believe and bring the unconscious to conscious, as you do that work, the hope is we're moving more and more to secure attachment. So what you just described is a, a position of secure attachment where you're discerning, right? You're not going to trust, every, like you're trusting, mm. but you're also going to believe people when they show you who they are. So that that's kind of, I think it varies on how people, if they are consistent, then I'm able to trust. And that's that that discernment and that uh, reciprocal relationship. Yeah. And, and, you know, all these models that we talk about or share, uh, it, it, use it for information purpose. Don't try to label yourself as one of these. <laughs> Diagnose uh, uh, yourself. Yeah. Well, again, it's a, either avoidant or anxious. The idea is like, oh, yeah, I do have some anxious tendencies. And also the people around you. And the people. Oh, yeah. now I understand why this person behaves this way. Maybe they have an anxious style and mm-hmm. I didn't know that. And and part of it is also to be able to uh, get get aware of like, 
am I trying if, if right like so, so between Sire and me uh, I'm the avoidant type you used to be still am at some points Sire Sire is the anxious um, used to be understanding it working on it everybody's doing their but but right like we the idea is that whoa whoa there, there's this uh, automatic response that I have mm-hmm. it's a reaction that I have because avoiding relationships in the past have act- has actually kept me safe when I was little mm-hmm. right or clinging to relationships has kept you safe and like, like if I if I just hold on to this life like it'll be fine mm-hmm. and I had the opposite reaction opposite learning mm-hmm. right and so what happens is that we uh, sometimes we tend to go back to our automatic responses when that we've been working on, right? <laughs> so, and, and it's okay. We've been working on this, my yeah. God, and we're still doing it, right? Right. That's and, how we feel sometimes. Right. And oh, the idea man. is to be able to use this language and say, hey, 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 you're trying to disengage again. Mm-hmm. Right. Or you're clinging. You're clinging, right? And it's okay. Why are you trying to, why are you being clingy? Mm-hmm. Why are you trying to disengage? To be able to just ask ourselves those questions so then we can get back. See, I think sometimes it's like, you know, when we shared the triangle last time, it's like, oh, yeah, we want to be always in this interdependence. You don't always stay in interdependence. At least we haven't figured out a way to always be there. We're there a lot more, but we're not always there. Mm -hmm. And it's to be able to catch ourselves that, oh, there's that needy part of me or there's that avoidant part of me Mm -hmm. and to catch ourselves and say okay let me see if i can pull myself back into the secure place right yeah so uh, don't don't use any of this language i i tend i try not to and hopefully it comes across as that i don't know if you how you use this information with your clients but it's not to label ourselves or to limit ourselves well i guess i'm avoidant (laughs) that's just who i am i'm just anxious that's who i am Right? No, no, the idea is to be able to use that to say, whoop, I know there's tools for me to get back, mm-hmm. tools to, to kind of self-regulate. So the person who asks that question says, interesting, self-awareness and self-consciousness is something I'm working yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. And so you'll, so now we, it's interesting again to have these different types of attachment that now what? No, to what? Yeah. Right? So in a relationship, whether romantic relationship or any sort of relationship, The hope is that one person stops. And I talked about this in my video um, this week. So if you haven't got a chance to watch it, it's called uh, Running Away. I don't know what it's even called. What did we call it? Something Anxious Attachment. Something about Uh, Attachment attachment Styles. You'll see it. You'll see it. If you go on our YouTube channel, Dragonfly Wellness TV, you'll see the most recent one that's out. Cyrus got these fun thumbnails all of a sudden. (laughs) Trying to be cool. (laughs) Making it more, you know, fun, interactive. Um, so I talk click about, on it, YouTube people. Click, I click, talk, click. I talk about how there's this dance, right? So the avoidant person will move away, and the anxious person will move closer, and then the, as soon as the anxious person starts moving closer, then the avoidant person will move away, and there's kind of this thing mm. that happens in relationships, all relationships. Now, the way through, the way to shift that is one person has to stop moving. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, which is going to bring up all sorts of discomfort in you. So if you're the avoidant person, right, and this this anxious person is always moving towards you, instead of moving away from them, you actually give them what they need, which is closeness. So you stop, you stop running away and you give them the closeness that they need. That's you being the secure attachment figure. That's you helping heal the needs of this other person. But I always have to sacrifice. I always have to, st- like, mm-hmm. that's that's the excuse that comes up, right? Mm-hmm. How do you deal with that? Like, I always have to be the one to... Yeah, it's like, the, it's like I always have to be the person that just move, stops moving, whether yeah. I'm the avoidant or the so, anxious, but... Oh, okay, so let me talk about the anxious one, then I'll, yeah, I'll get yeah. that. So if you're the anxious person, right, and you're always moving towards, your job also is to stop. And let the avoidant person have what they need, which is space. They need space. So Mm -hmm. let them have some space, right? It's going to be so uncomfortable. You might feel like you're dying. I've worked with clients who like, they feel like they're dying Mm. when they do that because it's so painful and so terrifying because it activates all of those early fears that we got. That they will leave me. 
right? That they'll leave me or that they did leave me and it was so heartbreaking and I never want to feel that way again, right? All of those types of things come up. Now, the question about why do I always have to be the one? You know, if you're here, you're probably the one. Somebody's got to adult. Somebody, somebody is in the relationship, whatever relationship it is, there's probably one person who's a little bit more interested in relationships or personal growth or change or growth. There's just one person who's more interested and that's you. If you're here with us on Monday Musings, likely that's you. And so likely you're the one who's going to have to go high when they go low, as they say. Mm-hmm. You're going to choose, you're going to keep choosing to go high because you're not going to you're not going you once you know this stuff you can't go back right you can't like pretend like oh i don't know no you know now and so yeah you might be the one so one of the things that comes up right like is that in we talk about with attachment styles is that in the relationship we can find that secure attachment right Mm -hmm. if if i can stop that means i can provide that secure attachment for that person so the one that's always running away is running away because there is nobody ever around. Right. Right? So it's like if somebody stops and says, oh, this person is actually staying put. Right. They're not on me. Yeah, like, okay, so I, yeah, so I can, get closer. I can go to them. The anxious person, if the avoidant person stops, it's like the anxious person is like, or sorry, the other person stops. The anxious person is like, wait, you're not going anywhere. So oh, I don't okay. have to chase you. That I don't have to chase you, right? So we can be that secure attachment for the other person. That's mm-hmm. great. But if one person, like we always, we also say it only takes one. Yeah. Right. So how do you become the, uh, to somebody else's question here, mm-hmm. right? The, the, it's a longer question, but the, the, the end is what I, I'm interested in is that how can I determine my attachment style now? I mean, I think I had anxious tendencies before. Now I do not feel the anxious tendencies all the time, only sometimes. The goal is to have secure attachment to self, right? Mm-hmm. So what is the self and the secure attachment about? Okay, so now we're getting really in it. We're getting deeper. So in, in attachment research, there was a presupposition, there was an assumption that there has to be an other. There has to be someone else. And that's kind of how we were designed, right? That there has to be an other in our space for us to regulate. That's just how we're designed biologically. Uh, people who don't have an other they'll watch TV because that gives you a feeling of there's someone else in the room with me, right? Like we just can't be without people. It's impossible for our Mm. biology. It's really bad for us. So that's what this particular model is based in. However, sometimes in this modern day and age, there is not an other or the other is not interested or able or capable to do those things for you, Mm. to be that secure attachment. So then what this person is saying, the goal is to have secure attachment to self. So here's where we access that deep rooted, steady, loving part of ourself that maybe shows up for other people, maybe doesn't show up as often for ourselves. Mm. So we get access to that and we start having that part show up for me. That part can show up for my sister without with my eyes closed. But how often do I ignore that part and just beat myself up instead. So I'm actually coming back to a more true version of myself, a more authentic, more real version of myself, which is securely attached because it's connected to another source, not people. It's connected to another source altogether. Okay, so we're going a little bit deeper now with this question. How do you, what are some practical ways of getting in touch with that Mm, great question so one of them is journaling so you can actually like write down your complaint (laughs) write down the thing that you're upset about complain about just write it out with your dominant hand and then ask a question and see what your non-dominant hand says Mm -hmm. so here you're getting in touch with another part of you that's more hidden that's more subtle Mm -hmm. so that's one it's kind of really interesting the first time you do it you might be like what like this feels really weird and but it kind of makes sense so try that that's one that you can try um another way is meditation because what meditation allows us to do is like watch the thoughts and not attach to them watch the feelings and not attach to them realize that we're not our thoughts we're not our feelings 
We're not our beliefs. We're not our opinions. We're something much bigger than that. And if we spend time every day getting in touch with that much bigger, it can be transformational. And people who are regular meditators will tell you, Mm -hmm. transformational if you do it on a regular basis. I was speaking to somebody today, right? They're into kind of physical exercise and physical movement and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about meditation. I'm like, well, aren't you meditating when you're lifting those weights? Aren't you meditating when you're doing that run? He's like, well, am I? I'm like, are you? You can. Can I can I speak to that? Because I have strong opinions. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> let's, I have strong let, opinions. Let's hear your opinions. It might be totally against what I said. Strong go, opinions go for about it. that. Okay. Uh, it kind of came out when I was teaching my class the other day. Oh, my gosh. Because someone's like, well, I, you know, I meditate when I go for a walk. And I meditate. Okay. There's a difference between something being meditative and meditation. Something can be meditative. I could be in the flow with some art project and that could be super healing and restorative and meditative for me, right? I could be on a walk in the forest and there's just that feeling of oneness and connection and that's meditative, right? Yes. It's therapeutic. It's yeah. healing. It's meditative. But meditation is a particular action. It's a practice. Sure. Everything is not meditation. People say, I'm meditating. I know you're not. You're engaged in a meditative activity, but meditation is a particular thing. Right. right? So It's like yoga. Yeah. Okay. Let me talk about that. So if you're actually moving your body and doing the posture, I mean, there's different kinds of yoga, but let's talk about Hatha yoga, the physical practice right, of yoga. Just go sit back there. Oh my gosh. You can go on your rent for the I'm next 20 I'm just going to say, like, if you're actually engaging in the postures and you're doing the, that's yoga, walking around in the neighborhood, that's not yoga. Like that's, I mean, you can call it a, you know, spiritual practice of meditative, but like, let's not say everything is everything. Everything is not everything. Some things are things and other things are not those things. Sure. Okay. I think so it's important. I think it's, I believe it's important. That's my strong that, opinion. Yes. I believe it's important that we have the ability to sit in silence. Mm-hmm. And, and, lots and concentrate of and focus. Yeah. Yeah. What I was saying mm. was that during that physical practice, mm-hmm. there is a there is an opportunity for us to pay attention to our thoughts. The True. meditative practice, right? Right. To be able to say, okay, like right, like we we've talked about how energy gets stuck in our body, mm-hmm. right? And that during that physical movement, we can allow. The, that energy to release absolutely if i'm conscious of it if i'm consciously and i don't need to know what that energy is i just like okay i just need to be able to move it. Mm-hmm. right when what i was talking to this person about this morning was just around can you pay attention to your thoughts while you're doing this mm-hmm. that 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 voice that says oh this person will leave me if i don't behave in a certain way mm-hmm. or this person is just like it's just too much mm-hmm. for me so those thoughts, when they when they come up, don't just accept it as true. Just say, huh. Observe. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Right? To just, just allow it to actually pass because otherwise they just stay and linger. Mm-hmm. And then it just comes back. Yep. And say, huh. do you need to go now? <laughs> because I don't believe that about myself. Right? To be able to kind of change that language. It takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of a uh, lot of practice of observing that thought that's coming up while somebody else might be speaking, mm-hmm. and to notice our judgments and all of that, to catch it in in that moment and reframe it to say, "No, I don't believe that about this person." Yeah, it yeah. takes practice. It's okay. It's okay if you have to do it uh, in the evenings only because you don't catch it in time. It, you might catch it a year from now. Fine. But to be able to catch those thoughts and release those thoughts and say, you know what, it might not be true. Hmm. It might not be true. So a good question coming in here. Uh, what about guided meditations? So there's lots of different types of meditation, right? So guided meditation is one type. Vipassana is a particular kind of meditation. Um, there is like Zen meditation. There's, there's different kinds of meditations. So guided meditation would count in my books. If you want my opinion. I feel strongly because I have friends who have dedicated their lives to learning about meditation, like actually dedicated their lives. You can't just tell me your walk in the woods is like, like, no, I'm sorry. Can't. 
I can't do it. All right, face off. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Move this forward. <laughs> Don't say anything yeah, stupid. I would say guided meditations would... It's just a different type of... If you're interested in meditation and all the types of meditation, like mindfulness meditation and breath basement, there's so many, right? Um, I have a colleague. His name's Elijah Goldstein. He's actually my friend, but we went to school together. Um, and he's got... What's his, what's his organization called? The Center... Med- Something about, yeah. Something it's, about it's meditation. The, oh, man. Center for... M- mindfulness. It's a mindful med, But either way, whatever it might be. But people are interested. They can I, find out. Yeah, more. absolutely. Yeah. Well, we'll have to find it and we'll have to share that information somehow. Yeah. Um, but what I, I think that the point being is that aware, getting aware of our thoughts. Mm-hmm. And meditation itself is being focused in silence. Maybe there's thoughts, maybe there's not, it doesn't matter. But it, the idea of the secure attachment, to go back to, you know, what we were talking about today. <laughs> I took move, us off the road, sorry. Move, move off your you pedestal. You asked me the question. Uh, I had to just... Move, no, I was just sharing something I was talking about. Take you off the pedestal. Um, okay, I'm off Take the soapbox. Your soapbox. No more venting. Okay, move go. the soapbox away. <laughs> is to talk about how to get to that secure attachment. So we've talked about journaling. Mm-hmm. We've talked about meditation. Mm-hmm. We've talked about meditative practices uh, that could include some physical exercises or or something repetitive. Dance or to, art. Or, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the idea being that we get we become the observer. We start noticing the thoughts that are coming the belief systems that we have about ourselves and others and to question it, to just say, huh, are you sure? Right. And that alone, like the, the act of observing sometimes opens a, opens a window Mm -hmm. into another possibility of being right. That I can be something else. Like, Oh, if, what if I'm wrong? Yeah. What if, what if I'm wrong about this? Like, clinging on to this person and holding on that the only way I'll stay alive is if this person doesn't leave me. What if I can survive without this other person? But like to be able to entertain that thought needs space, Mm -hmm. which means you need to question your current way of being, current belief system to question it. So then there is an opening possibly Mm -hmm. for another belief system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to buy into either one. But at least create that possibility. And I think that leads us more into the kind of that secure place. Mm -hmm. Or at least allows for that secure place. So we've shared journaling, meditation, meditative practices. Um, Oh, I'm going to use... You're going to use this. I know. What have I done? What have I done? You are going to... Yeah. Oh, no. Can I be meditative right now? Is that okay? (laughs) You know that time you don't like me watching football? I'm just being well, meditative. that's a meditative practice. That's a meditative football. practice now. See, everything is everything. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, so part of being secure, attached, right? Uh, and this has come up because it's also come up for me is can we be two, right? Like to the earlier question, can I be oscillating between two? Mm-hmm. And let me just kind of share my personal experience where I believe, yeah, it is possible uh, in a sense that it, because I'm doing this work, right, I'm trying to find those other parts of me that mm-hmm. I've been avoiding. Right. So you will. Right. And so I actually have gotten in Are touch. Are you sharing the screen? Uh, no, we're sharing not the screen. Okay. You want to share the screen? No. Yeah. So um, so we, uh, what was I saying? Sorry. Um, yeah. So, you know, that, that practice of becoming whole. Mm-hmm has allowed me to get in touch with that part that is actually anxious as well. There is that anxious part of me, part of me that's actually clinging to certain relationships right. and certain ways of, you know, how things used to be. Mm-hmm. And and just like I'm noticing, usually I, I'm, I'm not like that, but the more I get in balance, I'm actually finding there are certain things I'm actually anxious about. Mm. I mean, I've got the anxiety behaviors, but like I'm actually anxious about losing people mm-hmm. in my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. So remember when we did the psychosynthesis model? I don't know if you remember that. Maybe it'll come up. It's really, really fascinating. And it's about how we come into the world whole. And then life and growth and our experiences kind of chip off different parts of us. And we end up as this like half something. And then 
our, our adult journey is about collecting all those pieces back and becoming whole again. And so if you're in avoidance, avoidant attachment, then you've chipped off the anxious part. And if you're in anxious attachment, you've chipped off the avoidant part. So one of the big um, opportunities and lessons for anxious attached people is learning to be alone and actually enjoying your own company, mm -hmm. like just really enjoying your own company and relishing in that alone time. Um, the opportunity for an avoidant person, avoidantly attached person, is to connect and bond and really deepen your connections with others. So that's the, that's the learning edge, right? So you can, you can see which of those sounds good to you. Does it sound good to be connected and close or does it sound good to be on your own? That'll give you a little sense of which attachment style you might be more more often demonstrating mm -hmm. yeah, that's great um so if there's any questions please uh please share um online or uh in the zoom session so the the other piece around uh around the attachment style now mm -hmm. is knowing this information mm -hmm. how do we make if i'm the person that's going to show up that's going to do this work mm -hmm. how do i do the work like in the relationship the best metaphor that i have for that is to be the lighthouse so those of you who have worked with me you'll probably have heard me use that metaphor right be the lighthouse so what does that mean that means you're steady it doesn't matter how big the waves are crashing or how many boats are out at sea or what you're just shining your light you're just continuing to shine your light that's your only job is to shine your light stay steady and shine your light and so if if that was your you know, your mental refrain, right? If that was the chant that you told yourself, stay steady and shine my light, stay steady and shine my light. That's what I'm here to do. Stay steady and shine my light. That is secure attachment. Whether you, whatever style you're coming from, whether you're coming from anxious or whatever, mm -hmm. stay steady, shine my light. And don't get pulled into someone else's mm. chaos. Well, this goes to the question that we just got. Oh my it gosh, says, that's right. My can boy. a person pull you back into a particular attachment style? So I think you well, I, I want to maybe, I don't know if this is the question. Is that, so one, I can be a certain attachment style with you, but with kids, I could be a different attachment style. Is that a possibility? Mm -hmm. And it two, is. can a person then pull me? So like if I was avoidant, can somebody pull me back into this avoidant? Um, okay, so you've, you've kind of come into secure attachment, you're getting pulled back into your old style? Yes, for sure, right? When we're not grounded, when we're not settled, um, we can be moved by mm -hmm. the people around us. It's really common, yeah. right? And that's, that's I think, 80% of our journey is keep, like remembering our own roots, staying steady, staying grounded, staying centered and balanced, no matter what's happening around us. There's a meditation, a guided meditation called Stillness in the Storm, right? And people can get it on our website. Not right now. No? Not at this point. Oh. Yes, at some point. Okay. Soon, hopefully. It's, no, it's not available at the moment. But if you go to drsyra.ca, you can get it there. DrSyra.ca, go get the stillness in the storm meditation. Oh, um, that one's about like teaching us to be steady and stable and not getting caught up in what other people are trying to make us do or ask us to do or force us to do or mm -hmm. force us to believe or force us to think. It's like, who are you in the midst of the storm? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, one thing I'll, I'll say around this, right? Um, is if a person I find is pulling me in and I believe in taking responsibility for what's happening in my life, mm -hmm. then that person didn't pull me back in. I allowed them. <laughs> I gave them permission to pull me back in or mm -hmm. I chose to go back to the avoidance style. And then, which means, and, and the reason why that's powerful, at least in my mind, for me, is that if I made the choice to go into avoidance style again, because they pulled me back in supposedly, and if I chose it, that means I can re-choose the secure attachment. Right. And it doesn't feel like a choice. When it's happening, it yeah. doesn't feel like a choice. It feels automatic, right? right? And so part of our work, if you will, 
is slowing things down internally so that we can, you know, it could happen. And then kind of thinking about that after what just happened there, Mm -hmm. I just acted in a way I haven't acted for years. What's going on with me? Mm -hmm. Right. And getting rather than that person. And why did they show up? And what like that is what it is. Right. And that's not helpful. But thinking about getting curious about, oh, what just happened? Something happened there and it didn't feel good. And I want to understand it a little more. I want to think about that a little more. I want to talk that out with a friend or journal it out or, you know, meditate on it. Um, You know, explore it. Mm -hmm. So, yes, they could pull you back in, but we would take it a step further and say a part of you allowed that as Mm -hmm. well. And so getting in touch with that part that allowed it, what was that about? Right. Part of it to be fair, is that we have certain neural tracks in our brain that we've been developing for decades. Decades, We've been doing things a certain way for decades. And so we start doing something differently. When we're under stress, very easily we go back to those old roots. It's just normal. So we first of all, we want to minimize our stress, minimize our stress so we don't just go back there, but also make the choice more often to to be in the root that we want to be in, be Mm -hmm. in the, the mind map that we want to have. Yeah, I mean, I just thought of an extreme example. My um, when before my father passed away, I I was with them, you know, in this care facility, mm-hmm. and uh, bef- before he he passed, uh, he was kind of losing track of where he was, you know, what what he was doing, all of those things, right? And he said something to me, which just triggered me, like. Even I'm like even in this state he knows the buttons to push, <laughs> and um, and I was actually catching myself about to react, mm-hmm. and I'm like, this guy's not even here. Yeah, anymore. this guy is that. Co- I mean, obviously unconsciously he's pressing these buttons to me. He's not here, and yet I'm up. Like I was literally about to say something, and I physically like just pulled myself back in the chair mm-hmm. and said, "Come on, man." You can say whatever you want to say. He's not going to listen because he's out here. He's out of it. All of those things. But like he's literally said something which just like just cut. Right. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What am I doing here? I am actually literally allowed. Now, if maybe he was conscious, I wouldn't have been able to stop myself. Mm -hmm. Right. All of those things are possible. But I remember that moment very clearly because it's like in that moment I had a choice. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Like. (laughs) <laughs> unconsciously I'm letting people my father in that instance mm-hmm. uh, trigger me and cut me mm-hmm. where it didn't need it right like it's like oh, okay what a great question to ask yourself in when you're in these kind of interpersonal challenges is where is my choice here where is my where choice is here? my choice mm-hmm. here what do I actually have choice about here sometimes you don't get to choose what's happening it's just happening you do get to choose how you react you do get to choose what you make it mean. You do get to choose how you talk about it after. Those are all things you choose, right? So just asking that simple question, where is my choice here, gives us that feeling of empowerment and control back when things feel out of control. Mm, beautiful. Where is my choice here? Mm-hmm. It's a great question. Great self-reflection question. Um, is that... Okay, so another way of saying it, what would love do now? What would love do now? That's another way of saying it. The the challenge with that is sometimes love, sometimes you're in the midst of something and it feels like there's not a lot of love here and love can be triggering for some people, like it's an activating word. Choice is a a simpler, it's a less sticky word for a lot of people than love. So what would love do now? But then it's like, oh, I feel bad because I'm not doing what love would do. What's my choice here? Where do I have choice here? Hmm. Right? It's a little bit of a different flavor. Why is love triggering? It's so complicated. Like the word itself? The whole concept is so complicated for many of us, right? Maternal love, sibling love, friendship love, spouse love, forbidden love. Like there's so many connotations Mm -hmm. to that word, right? Right. Yeah. I think in this instance, love means the universal that divine feeling love right like if that's right the l capital l love yeah if i can get into that space but it would be the same thing with choice wouldn't it or no it's a little bit different i feel like it's a little bit of a different flavor because what would love do now is like there's a right way and a wrong way 
Can I do it in the way of love or can I do it another way, right? Mm. Whereas choice, there's like, what are the choices? There's no wrong or right or mm. there's just like, what, where is the choice here? No. Interesting Sometimes it's perspective. really hard to inject love. Into and then this is a problem with language, right? Yeah. This is a problem with language in a sense that I have a certain connotation for the word love. You see love totally differently. Mm -hmm. And that's why, I mean, I'm not saying you're getting triggered by it, but it's like you're and maybe the clients that you've had also have seen love do weird things. Mm -hmm. And so when we use the language, right, like the especially a limited language, mm -hmm. um, non poetic language like English sometimes gets in the way. <laughs> right. Right. Because we've talked about, right, like in different languages, there are different words for love, mm -hmm. for different kinds of love as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so, yeah, no, that, I mean, so this <laughs> this is an interesting. This is piece. how we do. Like we yeah. just kind of debate and discuss. Well, it. it's not just about debate, but it's also to kind of understand that we we also have limitations of how we can express how we're feeling in the moment. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us don't actually have words mm -hmm. for certain feelings. It's like. Like, I don't know how to describe it. I'm just feeling overwhelmed, but like, I don't like, but it's not overwhelmed. Like we get into this loop and we're trying to sometimes describe it rather than just sitting with it mm. and say, okay, but just be with this, just be with this, whatever change. this might be. Right. Mm. Um, and, and, and language is an interesting word. Like it'd be to, for some people choice would be choice could be trigger yeah, triggering. Maybe. Yeah. Right. It's like, I've never had a choice. I was never given a choice. Now you're wanting me to choose for my own life, like this kind of stuff, but I don't get to choose the clothes I wear, whatever, right? Like if you're talking about our kids, uh, <laughs> but it's stuff like that that sometimes kind of gets in yeah, the way. Yeah, so right? use the one that works for you, like whatever feels true, or maybe there's another one. Do you have any ideas? Put them in the chat. What other kinds of questions might you ask yourself in that moment mm. to, you know, choose the path of healing and wholeness rather than the path of death and destruction yeah the chaos any other questions that you ask yourself to i just uh, you know i I, uh, I ask myself and i don't know how, rather than using positive or negative i just say what's my path forward hmm what's my path forward what part, what is, part is present, present? oh i like that, that one that's, that's a good what point. part is present? so it's like where is my choice now or what is my choice now what part is present? What would love do now? What's um, my path forward? What's my path forward? So those are some, again, use the questions that kind of come up. And the idea isn't to get lost in the question like we just did, like about <laughs> wording, because uh, we just we just uh, geek out on the intellectuals piece of it sometimes. Oh, here's an interesting yeah. one. Can I press pause here? Can I press pause here? Yeah. This is an interesting one. What oh. will people think? Why is it so hard for me to do what I want to do? Oof. So that, that what will people think, that can actually be quite a limiting question, right? Because now it's again about other people having power and choice mm -hmm. and me not having any power and choice. Yeah. Right? So kind of keep that in mind. Why is it so hard for me to do what I want to do? That kind of sounds like a bit of a blaming question. Somebody mm -hmm. else's fault that I'm not able to do. Mm -hmm. So let's see if we can reword that. How would you reword this thing? Why is it so hard for me to do what I want to do? Someone saying, what would oh, kindness, kindness do, do now? now. Mm, that's okay. Someone saying, thank you for the reminders to be in the present and make conscious choices. So how would you write, what will people think? You know, I don't know if there's a way to write, what will rewrite, what will people think? Because people will think a lot of things. A lot of things. And sometimes they're not thinking about me. At which, all. Which I don't like. <laughs> like there's. And sometimes they're thinking really mean things. Yeah, yeah. And we've had that experience. Yeah. yeah. It's like, a, a, there's 8 billion people in the world. Mm -hmm. And... Not everyone's thinking about me. Can, can you I believe really? it? Like, can what? you believe it? What is up with that, man? Uh, <laughs> what would bring me peace now in, in this, this moment? moment. Mm. What would bring me peace now in this moment? Yeah, so beautiful. we've got some great questions here. Um, this is beautiful. Tell so, yourself, I have control over certain things. Ooh, I like this. How can I change things within my bubble? Ooh. I love that. Mm -hmm. How can I change things within my bubble? That's a response to why don't I get to do what I want to do and what people mm -hmm. think. How can I change things within my bubble? Love I love it. it. I love it. I love it. So we're getting close to yeah. the end already. Yeah. So I think we're going to end our uh, recording here. Um, thanks for everybody who joined on Facebook and YouTube. We're just going to end our 